Hey guys, this is our review for our chapter 3 test that's coming up. I'm going to read some questions that are going to look familiar on the test, but maybe the numbers are different. So really make sure you're focusing. If there's any problems with any of the problems and you don't understand how I explained it, please come and ask me, okay? You can always message me on Class Dojo, and I can give you really long explanations helping you out. So first off, we're gonna, I'm going over and picked out some hard ones, and they're all world problems, and we're going to work through them together. First one. A concert is playing at a venue that has 728 seats. 728 sounds important. I'm going to write it on the board. That's how many seats the concert venue has. Which is the best estimate for the total number of tickets available for 33 shows? Again, another number that's important. 33. Now, if you listened in our problem, they want us to estimate. So we need to make sure we estimate. If it's asking us to do it, we need to make sure that we do it. Then it says you're going to pick one of these options. It's A, B, C, or D. They give you just some options. So I'm going to write down those options so we can think through them together. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to need to take our numbers at the top and we're going to estimate them ourselves. Before going all crazy and picking an answer, let's estimate them ourselves. 728 is going to estimate into 700. 33, if we estimate this number, it's going to turn into 30. Now, which one of our problems is 700 times 30? B. B would be our correct answer. Now let's talk through why the other ones would not be correct. A says 600 times 30. It has 30, but it's saying 600. 600 is not a good estimate for 728 because it's 128 off. That's a lot. C says 600 times 50. Now this one has 600 where it's off by 128. That's a lot. And then by going 50, it's off by around 20, so that one's too far off. And then D says 700 times 50. Again, that 50 comes up. The 50 is too far away from our 33. And the 700 is exactly what we wanted, but that 50 is where it is not what we want. So it's not going to be D either. That's how we know that B is our best option. All right, let's do another one. The next word problem says, Miss Pirtle ordered 128 cartons of math books. 128, let's write that down. That's probably going to be important. On your paper, you would circle this number or underline it. The books were shipped in cartons that each held 46 books. That's important. We're going to write down the number 46. Now, part A, there's a whole other question for part A. The top part of the question just gave us the info, and then there's a part A and B where there's two separate questions about these numbers it wants us to answer. Part A says, estimate the total number of math books in the shipment. Write the equation to model your work. So it wants us to estimate. So we need to estimate these numbers. It wants us to give the answer, and it wants us to write the equation. So we're going to do all of those things. First, if we have 128, that number would estimate into 130. 46 would estimate into 50. But the question is asking, they want to know what the total number of math books would be in the very end. The total number, all these math books, how many math books are going to be? To do this, we're going to multiply these two numbers to figure out how many are in all. So we're going to take our 130 times our 50, and then that is going to give us our answer, which is 6,500. So you might have thought, wow, you, you solved that problem really quickly. I didn't even know what happened. Well, what you can do, a little trick, you can take 13 times 5. These are our base beginning numbers. We know 5 times 3 
is 15. 5 times 1 is 6, plus 1. I'm sorry, 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 is 6. 65. Then you can write down your 65, count your zeros, 1, 0, 2 zeros, and then you can add your two zeros at the end. So that's a little quick trick where you can do it a little quicker. So that's part A. Now we're going to answer part B of the question. Part B says, did you calculate an overestimate or an underestimate? Explain how you know. An overestimate is when you overestimated. The number is too high. It's more than what it should be. An underestimate, it was under the number that it should be. It's a lower amount. It's smaller than the actual real number. The part B wants us to know for that last problem I did, did we overestimate or underestimate? So we're going to answer them. Well, and it also says explain how you know. Well, you saw when I rounded, I took my 128 and I rounded up to 130. I took my 46 and I rounded up to 50. So I'm going over the number, I'm not going under. So that's an overestimate. So our first part of our answer is going to be the word overestimate. Then our problem says explain how you know. So I'm going to show you a quick way you can explain with some symbols instead of a bunch of words. So we could write our 50, because remember we took our 50. 50 is more than 46. 46 was our number of cartons. But remember, for, sorry, 46 is the number of books in each carton, and we rounded that up to 50. And you can say that 130 is more than 128, because 128 is how many cartons we had, but we rounded that up to 130. So... 50 times 130 is more than 46 times 128. So that's the final answer to our problem. So instead of using a bunch of words, I just used my one word and I wrote out equations instead. So this is a quick way to show how you know it's an overestimate. Even if you know it's an overestimate, you can't just write that. You have to tell why and how you know, okay? So now we're going to do one more, another problem. It's our third problem we're going to work on. This problem says, Miss Brissett flies 976 miles. So we're going to write down 976. That number must be important. Flies 976 miles round trip to visit her parents. What is the total distance D in miles that she would fly for 12 visits. Okay, so we're doing 12 visits. It wants to know the distance, which is D. It says write and solve an equation for D. So they're just throwing this letter D in there just so that you know that you're solving for distance. Don't let it confuse you. Don't let it mess you up. That is just going to go at the very end of the problem and we're not going to be too worried about it. So first, if we know that their trip is 976 miles, and we know to know the total distance, if she would do 12 visits, this means we're multiplying to figure out if it's this many miles and she went 12 times, what would be the distance overall? So we're going to take our 976 times our 12, and this would equal our mysterious letter D. So now we're going to solve for D. To do that, I think it's best that we stack our numbers on top of each other and multiply this way. All right? 2 times 6 is 12. 2 times 7 is 14, plus 1 is 15. 2 times 9 is 18, plus 1 is 19, always plug in our zero. One times six is six. One times seven is seven. One times nine is nine. Now we're going to add all these numbers up. 
2 plus 0 is 2, 5 plus 6 is 11, carry that 1, 9 plus 1 is 10, 10 plus 7, 17, 9 plus 1 is 10, 10 plus 1 is 11, so then we get D equals 11,712. That's how many miles in all that she would go if she went and visit her parents 12 times. So this would be your final answer. Let's do our one last problem to review for this test for chapter 3. Alright, for this one it says, Mr. Eddie has a budget of $18,000. So I'm going to write that down. That's a number that seems pretty important. This is something you would circle on your paper. $18,000. That's Ed, Mr. Eddie's budget. Uniforms for the band cost $315 each. That number seems important as well. Each band uniform cost $315 each. He needs 62 uniforms. Oh, here's another number. 62 uniforms. I'm going to write that down. That sounds like that's how many kids are in band. That's how many uniforms he's going to need, 62. He says, since, this is what Mr. Eddie says, since 60 times 300 equals 18,000, I can stay within my budget. That's what Mr. Eddie says. Now the question's asking, do you agree? Explain. So let's, let's check out this problem. So it looks like Mr. Eddie right here did some estimation. He took his 62, he rounded down to 60. Is that an overestimate or an underestimate? He took, went from 62 and he went down to 60. That's an underestimate. Then, he took his $315, $315, and went down to $300. Again, that's an underestimate because he went down from the original number. And he's saying that these two numbers equal $18,000. This equation is correct. 60 times 300 is 18,000. That's not what the question's asking. What it wants to know is can Mr. Eddie stay in his budget? Will this equation work out so that all 62 of these kids get their uniforms and that he can stay in this budget of $18,000? Well, we know that Mr. Eddie made an underestimate. He underestimated how much money he was going to need, which is then going to cause some problems in the end. So no, Mr. Eddie, Mr. Eddie is not going to be able to stay within his budget. So you would answer no, and then you would state that it is an underestimate. Okay, underestimate. So that lets you know that the real cost is going to be more than $18,000. Because if we took 315, that's the cost per uniform, times our 62 uniforms, we know that this number, this mysterious number, we know it's going to be more than $18,000, more than. On the problem, do you need to tell me how much this equals? Do you need to waste your time and solve all of that? Nope. All it wants to know is if you agree with what Mr. Eddie said. That's all it wants to know. And then you have to say whether it was an underestimate or an overestimate. Okay? So, as long as you answer that, you're good. And it's good to know that 315 is more than 300. 62 is more than 60. So this equation has to be more than this one up here. So that tells us that Mr. Eddie, if he's bought all these uniforms, he would go over the budget. And it's important for him to know that he would go over his budget because when we're dealing with money, we always have to budget out what we're going to do so that nothing bad could happen in the end if we run out of money. All right, guys, so that's your review for Chapter 3. That test is coming up. I suggest for you to watch this video at least two times. If you have any questions, see me in person, or you can write me on ClassDojo and I can explain more. Thank you.